Hello, everyone. With all of the awful information coming to light right now in Hollywood, with everything from R. Kelly to P. Diddy to the documentary Quiet on Set, there's now a conversation about the dark things that happen behind the scenes in Hollywood. But how about all of the dark things that were happening right in front of us on the silver screen for decades? Things that were openly known to the public, yet there was little to no repercussions for many of the people. Because celebrities using their money and fame to get close to underage children is not a new concept, sadly. And it has been happening for decades on decades on decades. And it has been happening for close to a century now. So today I wanted to go down the rabbit hole of celebrities who have openly dated minors. And I say dated lightly because I do not think this is dating. To celebrities who have openly admitted words from their own mouths to have done inappropriate things with minors to ones who have seemingly gotten away with it. And the first celebrity I want to dive into is the King of Rock himself, Elvis Presley, who was openly obsessed with teenage girls from the time he was 20 years old to his death. You're a little old for the teenagers now? That's the first time I'm gonna ask that one. I don't know, I don't feel too old. I still move around pretty good. Young girls, he liked young girls. He thought if they got 18, they're ready for social security. And the most well-known relationship Elvis had was with Priscilla, who he would eventually go on to marry when she was of legal age and she would eventually have a child with him. But Elvis was also abusing teenage girls his entire life, way more than I even imagined when I started to look into this. And what's so tragic to me and really speaks on the mindset of people, especially back then and how times were different, which they really weren't that different, let me tell you, is that these girls who are now full-grown women have children, grandchildren of their own, still speak about their time with Elvis in a positive light. Speaking about how it was magical, how it was fun. But when you really think about the reality of it, it is disturbing and it's shocking. And if you think that's a hot take, it makes me question your morals. To start, a 14 year old girl that Elvis called Little Francis was often at Graceland telling 60 Minutes, and I quote, he had the most perfect face a person could ever ask for, end quote. Elvis was 22 years old when the, and I quote, romance quickly blossomed, end quote. And it makes me sick just to read that. Elvis had full range of very young, barely teenage girls, and it was publicly known, widely known. There are endless amount of photos with Elvis with young girls. He seemed to have full range to do whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted with these girls, and he would often throw parties at his home that these girls would attend. Frances herself would say that she would stay overnight at Graceland with Elvis and party, and sometimes even be alone with him for long periods of time. She would often be skipping school to stay there. And my question whenever I look into these cases and these stories is where were the parents? Well, it seemed like the mass majority of these parents, like we've seen in the documentary, such as Quiet on Set, thought it was a privilege for their child to be chosen by someone famous to spend time with. And these parents essentially handed their children over to these celebrities, to the idea of fame and money. But I will say there were some parents who were more weary about it. However, they still allowed their children to go there. France is saying, and I quote, my mother called Graceland several times about me being home in time for school. Elvis would get on the phone and soothe her feathers when he said, I'll have her home in time, end quote. Now, despite what you may think with this grown man having access to all these young girls, they maintain a story that Elvis never had sex with them, but they would all maintain the same story that they all made out with Elvis. Let that sink in talking about how sometimes they'd make out for hours and hours and they would French kiss and he would, seems like maybe give them hickeys. There's a lot of details that are extremely disturbing to me because I'm talking about a 22 plus year old man. We're gonna be going all the way into his forties, making out with 14 year old girls. Let that sink in. That I'm supposed to be sitting here right now telling you that that's okay and that is normal because he's a celebrity and these girls were having fun with him. When Elvis was 24 years old, he met a 14 year old girl named Sandy Farah after spotting her in a photograph at her father's Los Angeles nightclub. After seeing this photo, he would contact Sandy asking to go out with her. However, she had school, so she couldn't go out that night. The next day, however, her mother would drive her to her father's club to meet Elvis. After this, Sandy's mother would allow Elvis to take her 14 year old daughter on numerous dates. However, her mother had to chaperone them. But after the fourth date, she allowed Elvis to develop a relationship with her 14 year old daughter and allowed Elvis to go on private dates with her. And I'm gonna say how it is. She gave a 24 year old man complete unsupervised access to her 14 year old daughter. Sandy would even go on to dance in six of Elvis's movies, which if this was just a normal work relationship, maybe it would make more sense. But as we heard in documentaries such as Quiet on Set, when 14 year olds or younger are allowed full access by executives and people in power, bad things can happen. Now let's talk about what Sandy had to say about her relationship with Elvis. 
She said, and I quote, it was a lot of hugging and kissing for many hours. He would shave his face very closely for me. But because it was still a man's face with little whiskers, I'd go to school the next day and my face would be all red and kind of raw, end quote. In her diary, she would go on to write, and I quote, it was when I was in love with Elvis. There were kiss days and unkissed days, she says, and we would kiss so much. Well, we would kiss a lot. The next day I would go to school and I'd have to put makeup on because my skin would be raw, end quote. Let that sink in. A grown man's face. Where she'd have to put makeup on to go to high school because she had a beard burn on her face. Just what the actual fuck? Picture me reading you all of this without the context that this is a famous celebrity. That this is just a normal 24-year-old man casually making out with a 14-year-old girl. It is disturbing. Now, eventually Elvis would try to convince Sandy's mother to allow Sandy to move to Graceland. However, apparently that was too far for Sandy's mother and she said no to that request. So Sandy would never move in with Elvis. Honestly, just from what we've talked about so far, the title of celebrity is every pdfile's dream. We're hearing it in the documentaries that are coming out now and we can see the exact same thing how it happened in the past. Whether their child is trying to be an actor or a singer or a dancer and these parents are giving their children up to the industry or these parents are giving their very young children up to celebrities who are asking for it. The status and title of a celebrity is every pdfile's dream. Because to this day, if you go and look at forums, if you go and look at the comment section of some of these documentaries about Elvis especially, you will see an endless amount of excuses of how this was okay. How it was okay for a 20 plus year old man to even be making out with minors is beyond me. But you will see it if you go digging and it is disgusting and it is gut-wrenching to me. And that is why the cycle of abuse was allowed to happen over and over and over again. And that is why we are here now Again, with documentaries like Quiet On Set and like the new revelations that are coming out about P. Diddy. Why is it now not okay that P. Diddy had custody of Usher and then tried to get custody of Justin Bieber, it seemed, and was allowed full access to these young 13 and 14 year old boys? That is now not okay. But when we look at what Elvis was doing, when we look at Elvis luring these young girls into his home, when we look at Elvis trying to get custody of these young girls and we'll see other celebrities do the same exact thing with these young 14 year old girls, that is now fine. But just because he's the king of pop, it's okay. And just because times were different back then, it was okay. When I will tell you, it still was not okay. Parents were still calling 911 when their 14 year olds were being kidnapped by PDF files. I have covered many and many of cases that have happened back in the 80s, 70s, 60s prior where normal average families were calling 911 when their kids were taken advantage of by adults. Yet it was okay if a celebrity did it. Make it make sense. But let's continue because around the time he was also with Sandy because he was with Sandy and doing things to Sandy for quite a lot of years, he would travel to Germany to be part of the war and he would meet 14 year old Priscilla. And he was stationed there around 1959. Keep in mind, Priscilla was only in ninth grade when a soldier would approach her and ask her if she wanted to come with him and his wife to meet Elvis. Picture a military man and his wife approaching a ninth grader, a 14 year old girl on the street and asking her to come along to meet say P Diddy. Would it not be called something different like luring a minor? You tell me. Either way, Priscilla would travel to meet Elvis. She'd tell him that she was underage and Elvis seemed to really like that. And he would end up playing her his music. Elvis also strangely really loved that Priscilla resembled his mother who had recently died. He, and I quote, also told his friend Rex Manfield that Priscilla was young enough that I can train her any way I want. Elvis wanted Priscilla to visit again, and the second time they met, he invited her to his room where they kissed, end quote. Again, I know I keep repeating myself, but the amount of defenders of this is just outrageous to me. If you took this context and put it into, say, a current case, like even, say, the Madeline Soto case right now, where a 13-year-old girl, just a year younger than Priscilla, was essayed by her stepfather, and that's not okay. But then we have Elvis here who is only making out with the girls and not actually having intercourse with them. That's fine. Sorry, this, it just angers me. It just angers me, the amount of people that are okay with this. Now, as we keep seeing, Priscilla's parents seem to be okay with her being alone with Elvis. And Priscilla said, and I quote, I basically threatened them and told them, if you don't let me go, I'll find my way, end quote. Priscilla was 14. She was not the parent. Her parents should have shut that down right away and told her, you are a child. You are not going to stay with this nearly 30 year old man. You're not to be hanging out with him. You're not to be making out with him. Priscilla even claimed that Elvis tried to give her pills to keep her awake because she was spending so much time with him that she was falling asleep at school and couldn't focus. Does that not sound toxic to you? 
Does that not sound like there's something wrong with that? And we know that happens with even celebrities nowadays, especially young children who are actors. They give them unknown substances to keep them going, to keep them working, because it's exhausting doing that work. And it seems like Elvis was trying to pass that down to the little girls that he was also interested in spending time with, because he wanted them to be able to stay awake and hang out and party with him as well. Now, Elvis also knew that he had to keep his relationship private with Priscilla, and he knew he couldn't openly tell the media about it because she was a minor and he was a grown man. Now, things fell off for a few years between them, and when Priscilla was 16, she would fly to Los Angeles to be with Elvis alone again. This is when Elvis began giving her amphetamines and sleeping pills so she could adjust to his crazy schedule. She started wearing more makeup because Elvis liked her wearing a lot of makeup and she started wearing more adult clothing. Priscilla saying, and I quote, I lived in his world. I wanted to please him. I wanted to fit in. I wanted to have fun with him. I wanted to see what it was that he liked, end quote. Does that not sound toxic to you? A 16 year old girl molding her entire personality, her look, her image, what she'd wear to please a nearly 30 year old man. Eventually Priscilla's parents would allow her to move into Graceland and finish off school there. Again, this reminds me a lot of what P Diddy did with Usher. And again, we're all finding that weird now, right? Why are there the double standards? That's my big question. Elvis was also extremely obsessed with Priscilla's virginity. And he seemed to be sleeping with dozens of other women when he was with her. But, and I quote, one favorite pastime of ours was using Polaroids to document sexual games, such as the seduction of a student by his teacher. End quote. I'm just going to leave that one there. I don't have any more to say about that. That is just disturbing to me. Just so disturbing to me. Elvis and Priscilla Presley were married on May 1st, 1967, when she was 21 and he was 32 years old. The story goes that he didn't have sex with Priscilla until their wedding night and she immediately became pregnant. And for what it seemed like, Elvis didn't want this kid. He even allegedly separated from Priscilla for about seven months and then they'd eventually rekindle things. Elvis also didn't want to have sex with Priscilla after they only had sex a couple times because he didn't like to have sex with women who had given birth. And he seemed to have this weird ick about it. He was very obsessed with virginity and purity. And again, that comes along with the young girls. And since Priscilla had lost her V card, he was no longer interested in her. Does that not sound like pedophile behavior to you? You tell me. When Elvis was 39 years old in 1974, he was yet again preying on another 14 year old girl by the name of Risa Gossin. Risa had been hanging out with Elvis's younger stepbrothers when he ended up picking them up in his white Cadillac. And that's where his obsession with her began. Risa saying, and I quote, he looked through the rear view mirror, turned around, smiled and said, I've heard all about you, end quote. Now put that in the context of a middle-aged 40 year old man saying that to a 14 year old girl off the street the friend of his younger brother. It's fucking creepy. And guess what he did after that? Well, according to articles, he enchanted her, but I'll tell you what it really was. He was grooming her in my opinion. He began taking Risa on expensive shopping trips, buying her hundreds of dollars worth of clothing. And again, Risa maintains that Elvis only kissed her. A 39 year old man kissing a 14 year old girl. And when Risa ended up asking Elvis why he liked 14 year old girls so much, he allegedly said, and I quote, that it took him back to his younger years, that it didn't feel like I was expecting much from him and made him feel more comfortable being with someone who was 14 years old, end quote. He also allegedly would admit that dating 14 will get you 20, meaning he knew exactly what he was doing was wrong, in my opinion. He knew exactly what he was doing was wrong. Suzanne Finstad, who is the author of a biography on Priscilla and Elvis's relationship called Child Bride, said, and I quote, Priscilla told me a really interesting thing when I was working on the biography of Priscilla. She said that Elvis confided in her more than once that he felt this tremendous pressure to perform sexually because he was Elvis. He was the king. He was the sex symbol. And he felt more comfortable, in control, and more sexually authoritative if he was with an inexperienced girl because they didn't know any different. End quote. Again, does that not sound like what a PDF file would tell a journalist through a jail cell? When Frances was later asked how she'd feel about her grandchildren being with an older man, she said, and I quote, my mother was 14 when she married my daddy, who was 22. So I didn't think too much about it. I probably wouldn't like that. But then again, they wouldn't be Elvis, end quote, which says to me that predatory behavior doesn't matter if you're famous. It tells me that if you are famous, you can essay whatever child you want. And it's OK because you are famous. Again, the comment section of any of these documentaries on Elvis trying to expose this are just it's sickening to me to read it that 
they make these excuses that the girls weren't traumatized by the experience and they had a fun time, so that's okay. But in my opinion, what all of this doesn't excuse is the fact that a 20 to 40 plus year old man was using his fame and money to gain access to underage girls. And if we can all collectively agree that the polygamist Tom Green, who I have done an extensive video on, who was marrying 13 and 14 year old girls and impregnating them, if we can all collectively agree that that is disgusting and that is wrong, and why can't we agree on the same thing Elvis is doing? There was extensive documentaries on polygamous Tom Green of him making out with underage girls as well. And that was disturbing. That was so disturbing to watch and that I have to talk about. And that is the same thing that is happening here. The exact same thing. I also seen a quote, which I don't have with me here, but I remember it, let me tell you. Excusing all of Elvis's behavior because he was only making out with these young girls, because it was described as if it was two teenagers making out and going about and having fun. But these weren't two teenagers. This was a teenager and a grown man. So that's not an excuse. Let's move on from Elvis because <laughs> there are even more celebrities who have done the exact same thing. So let's talk about it. One that disturbs me the most is of Jerry Lee Lewis, who, I loved his songs, Great Balls of Fire. I would play that song over and over and over again. But then I learned this. In 1957, 22 year old rock and roll singer, Jerry Lee Lewis married his 13 year old cousin, Myra Gale Brown. You heard that right. Became romantic when Jerry was at our house and he would ask me if I wanted to go somewhere like to the Dairy Queen and get a, you know, ice cream or something like that. And he would just be silly with me and then he started kissing me. Now shockingly the press at the time was actually upset about this and called him a cradle robber. His performance fees dropped from $10,000 a show to $250 a show. Radio stopped playing his music. There were actually some repercussions for his actions. Now legally he was allowed to marry this 13 year old girl. Again, all of this stuff was somehow legal back then. Don't ask me how. A 22 year old man marrying a 13 year old is legal. Again, we talked about that in the Tom Green video that I did. Uh, Jerry, what about this reception in London? Can you tell us about that? Yes, sir. Uh, we had a very good reception, sir. Uh, oh, is that so? Yes, we had a very nice time, and uh, the people treated us real nice. Well, the papers reported that you were greeted with silence over there and with catcalls from the audience. Is that right? Well, I, I can't agree with them there, sir. Uh -huh. I, our audience was very nice and very good. Mm -hmm. Were you there, Mrs. Lewis? I was there, but I wasn't at the shows. Oh, you weren't at the shows? Mm -hmm. Oh, did you notice anything uh, like that, that sort of reception? No, it was a very good reception, I thought. Well, why did you leave? Well, uh, I don't uh, answer those questions, sir. My manager might knock my head off or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when were you married? Pardon? When were you married? No well, we leave our personal questions out of this, sir. <laughs> All, All right. right. Well, good luck. Thank you. But I do think it's interesting to see how it seemed to be okay that Elvis was doing things with these young girls, but when Jerry Lee Lewis did it, it was not okay. Why the double standard there? I think maybe the difference kind of would be that, you know, Jerry Lee Lewis actually married this young girl and he was actually consummating the marriage, which I would like to call he was essaying her because she was 13 and he was 22. But we do know that he was having intercourse with his 13 year old cousin because she would end up giving birth to their first child when she was only 14 years old. And what's really sad about that case is that people actually blamed her for Jerry losing his career and his career going downhill, which is awful to blame a 13 year old girl on that. And she's talked extensively about it. I'm not even going to go into it, but she talked a lot about how that was a lot of pressure when she was younger and it made her stronger. And she actually like took care of the whole household because Jerry was like very irresponsible, it seemed like. And she literally like raised the kids, did the finances and all of the stuff at 13 and 14 years old. It was, it's a lot, it's crazy, it's crazy. So let's get into some more rock stars. Like Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin, who at the age of 28 was in a sexual relationship with a 13 to 14 year old girl named Lori Maddox. And she was what was called a baby groupie, which were young teenage girls who followed around rock stars. Now, Jimmy seemed to know what he was doing was illegal because he would allegedly keep Lori in his hotel room when he'd go on tour because he couldn't transport her across state lines because, and I quote, transporting a minor across state lines for sexual purposes carried heavy criminal penalties, end quote. But it gets worse than that because Lori Maddox seemed to kind of go all around to all these different rock stars at that time. And she has made claims that a 26 year old David Bowie actually took her virginity, AKA just add another layer of statutory artwork to all of this. And you want to know what her mother said? 
And I quote, my daughter is like Priscilla Presley, end quote. These parents thought it was cool that their children were hanging out with these older men because they were famous. And as Lori's gotten older, she seems to have realized kind of how wrong all of this was. Saying, and I quote, I think that's what made me start seeing it from a different perspective because I did read a few articles and I thought, shit, maybe. I never thought there was anything wrong with it, but maybe there was. I used to get letters telling me he was a PDF file, but I never think that of him. He never abused me either. I don't think underage girls should sleep with guys. I wouldn't want this for anybody's daughter. My perspective is changing as I get older and more cynical, end quote. As she stated right there, people back even when she was a teenager were sending her letters telling her that he was a PDF file. So it wasn't okay back then for all these people that continue to say times were different. Times were not different. Times were different in many ways, but it was just that no one was speaking up about this. No one was giving a shit the way they are now about this. And no one was protecting the children back then the way we try to protect children now. And it just seemed to be a cycle of generational abuse of it being okay for things like this to happen. And it happened and it happened and it happened and no one spoke up. And now in today's day and age, we're trying to break that cycle of abuse. But let's continue because these next celebrities will literally admit to essaying minors. And some of them never even gotten in trouble for it. When Steven Tyler from Aerosmith was 24 years old, he was dating a 16 year old named Julie Holcomb. But Steven Tyler seemed to be, maybe you can call it smarter than Jimmy Page because he ended up tricking her mother to give him legal guardianship so he could transport her across state lines without getting arrested by telling Julie's parents that he needed these papers signed so that she could be enrolled in school. Does that not sound like predatory behavior to you? Working the system so that he could get access to this young girl. And instead of her going to school, he, I would call it essayed her and carried out this illegal relationship. Now, Julie claims that Steven Tyler ended up getting her pregnant. However, Steven Tyler forced her to get an abortion, which is very similar to an incident that happened with Britney Spears, as we would soon find out in present time. Julie saying, and I quote, at the time, I thought he was the best thing in my life. My sad, vulnerable story, as well as my youth and personal attractiveness, captured his interest, end quote. She is literally admitting there that he was attracted to young girls. Now, in a memoir Steven Tyler would later write, he said himself, and I quote, she was 16, she knew how to nasty, and there wasn't a hair on it, end quote. These celebrities literally admit to it. They admit to what they do, yet no one seen this as a red flag. He literally admitted to her being essentially prepubescent and essaying her. It's disturbing. It's very disturbing. Now, in a turn of events in 2022, Julie would actually file a lawsuit against Stephen for essaying a minor, AKA her when she was a minor. Now I couldn't find a ruling on that. So if you know about that, let's have a chat about it down below. But that is a breath of fresh air. And my heart goes out to Julie. And I really do hope that she wins that lawsuit because again, he literally admitted to it in a memoir. Like, it's crazy to me. Now, Anthony Kiedis is another celebrity who is from the Red Hot Chili Peppers who admitted sleeping and essaying, if you want to call it that, a 14 year old Catholic schoolgirl who came to his concert when he was in his mid twenties. Anthony going into extreme detail in his own autobiography by saying, and I quote, I got out of that shower ready to go. She immediately threw off her clothes and we made love on the floor. I had known the girl for five minutes, but I was certain for my affection for her. We spent the night together and I found out more about her, including the fact that she went to Catholic school. She would be the inspiration for a later song called Catholic School Girls Rule. The next day we drove to Baton Rouge and of course she came with us. After we got off stage, she came up to me and said, I have something to tell you. My father is the police of chief and the entire state of Louisiana is looking for me because I have gone missing. Oh, and besides that, I'm only 14. I did want to get her the hell back home right away. So we had sex one more time, end quote. What, just what the fuck? Just what the fuck? Another example of just blatantly talking about essaying children. He literally admits he slept with her. And then the next day, again, she said she was 14 and he was like, cool, let's do it again. And he did. Just what the fuck? Anthony would later go on to date a 16 year old actress named Ion Sky when he was still in his mid twenties as well. So just the cycle continued. And it's not just 50 years ago that this was happening. An Owl City guitarist named Daniel Jorgensen was in his mid twenties when he was accused of essaying a 13 year old girl in 2012. Her attorney saying, and I quote, I just think it's unfortunate that these bands prey on these young girls that are their fans and take advantage for their own deviant sexual misconduct, end quote. That's the best way to put it. Is that not what I've continued to say throughout this entire video? And now this attorney is saying the same thing. 
these celebrities take advantage of these young girls who are their fans, but it's just passed up on because they're celebrities and these girls are having fun. Now this 13 year old girl actually, you know, accused him of attempting to lure her onto a tour bus, getting her Facebook so he could groom her over webcam for years. She claims he sent her inappropriate pictures of him naked. And she also claimed he essayed her on a beach. However, Daniel would only go on to admit that he had exposed himself to the little girl and he'd plead guilty to fourth degree lewdness with a minor. Again, so just another one getting away with it essentially. But it still happens till this day. How about Joel Madden from Good Charlotte? He was 25 years old when he dated a 16 year old Hillary Duff. Fergie was 23 years old when she dated a 16 year old Justin Timberlake. Tyga was 25 years old dating a 17 year old Kylie Jenner. Milo Ventimiglia was 29 years old dating a 17 year old Hayden Pentier. And the list is endless. Some of those get so close to the line where people are like, it's okay, you know, 17, 25, 25, 16, who cares, right? People should be caring. I cannot imagine being 23 years old wanting anything to do with a 16 year old. How does a 16 year old have anything in common with a 20 year old? They don't. And I understand the age of consent laws that are like 16 year olds can consent to, you know, sexual activity with someone who is maybe two years older than them or three years older than them, et cetera. Like that fine line. I can understand that. That's fine with me. It is human nature to want to procreate, et cetera, et cetera. That's a whole different deep topic we can go on to for another day, but I can understand there being an age of consent law saying it's okay for a 16 year old and a 17 year old to do something, but for a 16 year old or a 17 year old to be doing something with a 25 year old, 29 year old, a 39 year old to be kissing a 14 year old, that is inappropriate, that is wrong, and that is disturbing. In my opinion, that is SA. But hey, if that's a hot take, let me know down below. But as I said, the list is endless. Even if some of these relationships are so fine on the line, as we are now seeing with these new documentaries and new arrests coming out in Hollywood, it's not just fans being lured in, it's other young celebrities who are underage being lured by the older celebrities. And if we look at it how it is, would it not be weird for a 16 year old from say a low income family or middle class family to be dating a 25 year old or a 29 year old? That's weird to me. That is weird. May actress Mandy Moore was 16 when she dated a 20 year old actor named Wilbur Vandorama. They met on a photo shoot for a teen magazine when she was only 15 years old and the two made out. He was her first real boyfriend. After the breakup, he would later say to reporters, and I quote, the sex with Mandy was good, but it wasn't like warm apple pie end quote. Age, again, their age gap wasn't huge, but he was still 20 years old talking about having sex with a 16 year old. Weird to me. But these are just the tip of the iceberg of, you know, inappropriate or illegal minor relationships between either Hollywood celebrities and other celebrities or Hollywood celebrities with minors that are their fans. And it's scary. The music industry and Hollywood in general is terrifying and it's scary. And I could make this a 20 part series of all of the different illegal relationships in Hollywood or celebrities who have dated minors, which I, it's disgusting for me to say that. And it just, as you can probably tell, it's just very aggravating. But I just wanted to have a discussion with you all about that because everyone's talking so much about P Diddy and about the documentary that came out with Quiet On Set. And I think those are all very important conversations to have. And I'm so glad that this is all coming to light right now and everyone's talking about that because it's very important. However, this isn't anything new. And I think this needs to be a bigger conversation of how in general, this has been allowed to happen for decades and decades and decades and for nearly a century, as I said, because this has been happening since at least the forties, the fifties, and I'm sure it happened before that as well in Hollywood. It's disturbing and it's sad and it's scary and it's terrifying. So I want to have a larger conversation with you all down in the comment section. I'll be down there with you all chatting about all of this. Did you know about some of these celebrities who have had these inappropriate relationships? Did you know some of these details? Because I didn't until I started looking into all of this. And when you really dig deeper, it's just a rabbit hole that's bottomless and you'll just keep going, going and going down it. And it's scary. It really is. And the sad thing is it's excused and it's allowed to happen because of fame and money. But as I talk about every single week on my channel, there are kids being kidnapped or being essayed by their own family members. And that's not okay. But why is it okay if celebrities do it? Why was this allowed to happen for so long? Why is it excused to this day? because they were celebrities and it was fun. Let's have a chat about all this down below. As always, I hope you all stay safe out there, lock your windows and doors, and I hope to see you in the next video.